Okay. So we look at this and everybody's telling me, no, no, you can't subtract. You can't ignore X that you're subtracting because this is not small. And it's not small. And I can subtract X. Now, I want you to think for a minute about why I can subtract X. When you filled in your chart, you said this will be positive X because this has to go backwards. So this is 0.4 minus X, 0.6 minus X. So at equilibrium, we have, I'm sorry, minus X. So we get 0.4 minus X at equilibrium and 0.6 minus X. So now, when you think about what's going on, which way is this equilibrium going? Backwards. So we could have turned it around if you wanted to make it look like reactants were making products, but we don't have to because it's equilibrium. It can go both ways. But if I did turn it around, if I wrote this, CO plus water is in equilibrium with the acid, What's the K for this? 1 over 1 1.6 times 10 to the 6th. So isn't this the real chemistry? So is this number small? Yes. So can I ignore X? You bet. Now, this, this was a lot to think about. This was a hard problem. You had to go back and use Charles' law or the ideal gas law twice. Then you had to think about this changing temperatures, think about the idea that we're going to use pressures in an ice chart for the first time because we've used concentrations before. So now, once you assume X is small, this becomes pretty simple. You can. Yeah, there's no rule you only get to ignore one X in an equation. Okay, if X is small compared to 0.4, it's small compared to 0.6 for sure. So now we get X times 1.6 times 10 to the 6th is equal to 0.4 times 0.6. So X is equal to 0.4 times 0.6 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the 6th. Indeed, x is small. It is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 7th atmospheres. Now, that is very small compared to 0.4 or 0.600. So the pressure at equilibrium is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the negative 7th atmospheres. Because I took this and started rearranging. So it really was quite an involved problem. Now, it was fancy. But was there anything in there that was really hard? Any step was hard? No. Finding the pathway was hard. That was really complicated because you had all this weird stuff going on. You were given mass of one thing, information about a gas at one set of conditions that then changed. So you had to do a lot of thinking. And this is the kind of problem that you're going to see more and more of as we get to midterm and beyond in Chem 112. Because we're going to be introducing new concepts that bring in all the old stuff you learned in Chem 111 and earlier this semester. For the final exam, I could write one problem. You know, it could be one problem, and it would be everything you've learned in 111 and 112, because I could write it out in words, so you'd have nomenclature, you'd have to go find a molar mass, you'd have to balance an equation, maybe you'd probably even have to finish the equation, predict the product, so it could be really <laughs> all-encompassing, but it'd be a nightmare to grade.
Because it'd be the all or nothing is how I'd grade it. Because trying to give you partial credit, figure out, oh, they messed up this part. What do I do next? I don't want to do that. Okay. That wraps up uh, Chapter 14. Do you have any questions?